I thought I would take you along with me as I paint this corner of a garden in Mexico and show you my process for using gouache, especially for a bit more of a complex reference image. And then I also want to show you exactly how I make my own art prints at home for my Etsy art shop. I'll put some timestamps below so you can access what parts you want to see more easily. I'm using gouache for this piece, as always I'll link all the materials below and I did it in my sketchbook because initially I was just doing it more as a casual sketchbook practice but I love how it turned out so much that I wanted to send it to the owners of the house where I took this reference photo from so I decided to turn it into a print and then I loved how the print turned out so much that I decided to put it on my Etsy shop and I thought maybe it would be useful for other artists out there to see how someone else does their prints. I always love seeing that kind of content. I love painting from my own references. There's something so special about reliving the memory of what you're painting. And I also feel like it gives the piece so much more importance. So I currently live in the US, but I have family dispersed in various countries, so when I visit them I love taking reference photos. This particular place in Mexico, which is where my partner's family lives, is just the most vibrant little patio garden that is just full of plants and animals and hummingbirds. And one of my favourite things to paint is sunlight, or the sun hitting things and creating shadows. And I also love vibrant colours, I'm so drawn to bright colours. Um, so I thought the sunlight coming through the trees was creating the most beautiful light on the ground, which is why I took this picture. This piece was such amazing practice for capturing the accurate values in order to make sure I was portraying the depth as well as having the light really look like light. I needed to really make sure the values of my colours, so how light or dark the colours were, was accurate enough to give that perception. And for the most part I think I achieved that, although I definitely had to adjust some things along the way. For example, I had painted the turquoise wall a little too light initially. I noticed this because as I started to put down the lighter leaves of the plants where the sun was hitting them, it was kind of blending into the wall like they weren't popping. So I knew the contrast of values was not sufficient to communicate the sunlight. I knew that if this was happening with the plants, then the white highlights of the bench were also gonna get really lost in the background and appear kind of flat. So I had to darken the wall more which was a bit complicated because I had already started to add in foreground detail but luckily the wall had a lot of texture and so I could use a drier brush with darker paint in order to create very natural marks that appeared to be wall texture without having to paint the whole thing again. I think this adjusting as you go is always going to happen to an extent no matter how experienced you are because as you start to see the colours next to each other you can more clearly see how they relate to one another. So I approach my gouache pieces thinking about layers, I really like to layer the paint. I start by going from the colours I perceive to be the furthest away and then I begin to build from there into the foreground. When painting sunlight and shadow, I start by laying down the lighter colour, then I build the shadows on top. I find that this prevents my lighter colours from muddying and helps keep those crisp shadow shapes. And I used the same approach with the bench too. I put down a thin layer of the light colour and then I painted the darker shadow areas on top and this helped maintain the brightness of the sunlight.
After I have the first layer down, I build out the foreground on top. And for that, I tend to go from darker layers to the lighter layers. So for example, with the plants, I'll put down the dark green. And once that's dry, I'll lay down a thicker mixture of white or a really light color. And that's the beauty of gouache. It's so opaque. You can really put down a bright white on top of a dark color and it will still look really bright. I just don't like to do that with really large areas because it can muddy if you go over it too much. So it's okay for smaller details details but this wouldn't have worked for those bright sunlit areas on the ground. I really really like how this turned out and I think that has to do with the feeling I had while painting it just as much as the physical outcome. I was transported back to the memory of this garden while painting which I think really helps influence the final piece and I just love the shadows on the ground. Painting sunlight is really my favourite. So this is when I decided I needed to make a print of this to send it. I have a scanner, it's very basic and it actually does the job really well. It's the Epson Perfection V39, I'll link it below. If you're thinking of purchasing a scanner, I really don't think you need anything super fancy. Just make sure it scans with a high DPI, dots per inch. I do mine at 2400 dpi to be able to get those tiny details and textures and it scans really really well. When I first started making my imprints I used to take photos of the work which is still a very good option by the way you don't necessarily need a scanner. I just found that I would need to do more editing of the photo to make sure the colours were as accurate and even as possible. But with scanning my work and after learning more about the printer that I have, this is the Epson XP 15000, I'll link it below. I realized that actually making sure that the settings were correct when printing, like setting, selecting the right paper and color settings and doing any cropping directly on the JPEG image, it printed out so accurately to the original work. The color matching is actually really, really accurate. Um, sometimes I get a little bit of oversaturation, but I actually think it looks really good in this particular piece. Like the slight oversaturation made those highlights pop out a bit more and I ended up preferring the print to the original. I'll show you some other prints I've made in a bit, but overall I would really recommend this printer and scanner combination. There are definitely more sophisticated machines out there, but I think that they're very good for starting out and they don't compromise the quality of my work, which is really important to me. The paper that I use in my opinion is one of the best though. It's the Velvet Fine Art paper by Epson and I find that it really prints so vibrantly and I love the texture of it. It makes the prints almost look like original seeing as this is the type of paper I tend to paint on with this kind of texture. As for packing and shipping supplies, I try to keep it as simple as possible to not create huge amounts of waste, but still ensure everything is protected. I use some recycled cardboard for backing and these plant plastic sleeves which are compostable. I also like to include a little personalised postcard or note when I send my prints and I use these recyclable rigid mailers for extra protection. I designed these cute rubber stamps which I think are a really cool way of personalising the envelope with whatever logo or message you want and I think it's a bit more of a sustainable option than ordering labels with these logos or messages. I want to eventually design one with my name or some more personal branding from my studio once I have that figured out. I'm only shipping to the US at the moment because I'm still trying to figure out the best way to do international shipping that is more streamlined and reliable. I think I'm going to start using the shipping through Etsy feature for international orders because it seems like the simplest way to do it.
I'm still very much at the beginning of my journey of selling my art, so I know this process will probably evolve, but I hope it's useful for you to see my current process from start to finish. I know there's tons of fantastic advice out there when it comes to printmaking and selling, so take what you found useful from this and leave behind what you haven't and maybe add it to the bucket of information that you have and hopefully it will help you on your own journey of selling your art. Here are a couple more examples of prints I've made with my printer. As you can see, the colors are super vibrant and they're very, very true to the originals. I've kept to a few standard framing sizes depending on the artwork. These are little mini prints I did for Valentine's Day and these are from when I went to Venice. As you can see, I really love painting shadow and sunlight. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. Feel free to give it a thumbs up if it was. And I hope you have a great week. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.